Hi, David from Electra Teaching here. Uh, continuing with part three of the midpoint rule and Simpson's rule, and we're now about ready to put the program on the calculator. So that's the next little part we're going to do here. Um, the midpoint and Simpson's uh, rule have already been done by hand on parts one and two of this video sequence. And um, and I've already done a little programming with the trapezoid and left end and right end points on a previous uh, video sequence. So um, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to click program on the TI. Sometimes the TI-84 looks a little bit different. I have a lot of programs in here because I use it as a teaching tool with my students, so forgive the excess stuff in here. I've already done a calc sum for estimating uh, for uh, the name of the program that estimates left end and right end points as well as the trapezoid area approximation. We're going to do one called a calc sum 2. I just came up with the phrase calc sum. You can name it anything you want. You can call this midpoint Simpsons rule, MP, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to go create new. It's on alpha lock, on alpha lock. So after you go to the program button, you create a new one. Um, you're going to get an alpha lock, and I'm going to type in calc sum 2, calc sum 2. So C A L S U M. All right, try to do something, give it some sort of name, something similar to what I've done there. Um, and I'm just going to take the alpha off and hit 2. Okay, and this is what it should look like. It should look like a blank line with a colon over here. Uh, in TI programming, as well as most other programming languages, one instruction at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask for the A and B and the amount of ends. So the interval from A to B and the amount of ends is needed first here. So if you go to Program button and you go right arrow, there's an input output list. Okay, there's something called prompt, the second one down, and this is a very convenient. In fact, I've only seen it on the TI, a very convenient way of just getting variables uh, filled with numbers. So we're going to prompt. We're going to ask the user for the alpha a, alpha a button, comma above the seven, alpha b from a to b, comma, and how many ends? Alpha n. <coughs> hit enter. The next line is we need to build a delta. We need to build a delta. So the delta is, as you know from the formula, b minus a over n. So we're going to go parentheses alpha b minus alpha a close parentheses divide by alpha n, alpha n. And we're going to store this, the STO arrow button. We're going to store this into a d variable for delta. For the midpoints approximation, we're simply going to use the sum sequence command that's inside the TI-83 for basically summing up a bunch of different uh, uh, equally intervaled away um, inputs. Uh, and if you look, the, D, the inputs for the midpoint are equal intervals from D over 2 to 3D over 2 to 5D over 2, etc. to the last one. Okay, they're all equal intervals, so we're allowed to use a kind of a shortcut of using the sum sequence button. So in the list, it's second stat button, two over is the sum command, sum, and then the sequence, so two over is the sequence here, uh, excuse me, go second list and then one over to get sequence that's in the operations. So we're going to sum up a sequence. Sequence is just comma separated variables. Sum is the summation of them. Um, we are going to run the sequence looking at our formula here starting at, let's see, a plus delta over 2. That's going to be our starting point. So let's see. We're going to use the y1 to hold our function just like we've done in previous programming. So I'm going to go, the, the sum sequence command has five entries. It has the function, the x variable, and then from where to where, and then incrementing by how much. So let's put in the y variable. You go to vars, right arrow to y vars, their function in there. And I'm going to select the y1. So this means whatever I put in y1 will be what it's going to plug and chug for the function. 
comma. X is the variable we'll be using when we put it into Y1, so we need to tell what variable we're incrementing. Incrementing, excuse me. Comma, where we start. Well, we start from the alpha A plus the delta over 2, alpha D divided by 2. That's our starting point, comma. We go all the way up to the B minus the delta over the 2. So over 2, excuse me. So we're going to go up to alpha B minus the delta over 2. So we're going to go alpha D divided by 2. So from A plus D over 2 to B minus D over 2 incrementing by how much? In this case, still just the simple D increments. We just did it from midpoint to midpoint, which is still a D increment, as I talked about earlier in the previous video. All right, so that's going to sum up all of our heights. We're going to store this into a variable. So I'm going to store, I'm going to close parentheses twice here, once for the sequence, once for the sum, and then store that into the variable, let's just call it M. Let's just put it into any variable, but M for midpoint heights. I'm now going to display, so I'm going to go to Program Commands. I'm going to hit the Program button after I've got to the next line by hitting Enter. And then I'm going to the Input Output, and I'm going to display three down, or two down from the first one. So display is, I'm going to display the delta, and that in this case will be the pi over 4, right? So the delta alpha d times the midpoint sum of heights, the midpoint sum of heights, alpha m. To run the program, to run the program, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to call up the program again. It's called calc sum 2. So if you hit program and you're on the executable top layer here, um, you're going to then go down to calc sum 2 okay, and run the program. But before I do this, I better make sure my y equals has the function I need to. My y1 has the function I need to. So I'm going to actually go to y, quit out of here real quick. I'm going to go to y equals, and I do still have y1 as a square root of sine of x. Okay, so now I can go back to the programs. I'm going to execute calc sum 2, and let's see if I kick out this 2.4815 answer that we've done here. See, we've done it by hand for four ends. So from zero to pi, and I know I'm in radian mode, so that's correct. N is four, and it did not work. It did not work. So I gotta figure out what I did wrong here. So you get to learn from my own mistakes here. Give me one second, I'm gonna pause the video. Hi, I'm back. Sorry about the delay there. I do believe my calculator is having a problem. I've double checked some things and it is actually not calculating. I think on my calculator alone, I bet your answer was more uh, appropriate or actually the 2.4815 that we were hoping for. But for whatever reason, my calculator is not uh, going all the way up to the last sequence here and I've double checked it and I've checked it on some other uh, ways of of uh, uh, seeing what will happen but if I actually just let it run up to the B value it'll work and get the 2.485 value I want but this code is uh, usually very sound I've done this before and I bet yours is working so I'm gonna leave it as is and we're gonna move on to doing the Simpsons programming and we're going to do that in part four. So uh, sorry for the confusion here at the end. I think my calculator is having some issue with the sequence command not going all the way up to the last term. Uh, I could trick it, but right now I think yours is working correctly because if I check it on my other calculator, it works fine. And uh, we're going to move on to the Simpsons rule in part four in our last little installment here. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that I have helped.